What is going on guys? In this video I'm going to show you how I quickly put together some rocks to add into my Kimberly Rock Monitor enclosure behind me here just to add in a little bit more usable space for her and a few different varieties of things for her to climb on. So as many of you guys would have seen, you would have seen me put together this build in the monitor corner here. This is definitely my favourite corner I've ever kind of created. These enclosures were just, yeah, next level for me, next level. It was a game changer, you know, it was great for me to be able to kind of put together everything in this room. Um, but nonetheless, back to the point at hand, you would have seen me put this together. And um, as you can see, we've got one big rock stack and that was about all I've run for a long time. Now, what I have found is I was trying to give the female Kimberly rock monitor in this enclosure a load of land space so she could use that if she wanted to. And what I found is I've never caught her on the ground. She's always on the rocks. She's always wedged in the side there using that vertical space in this gap here or in her favorite spot, which is this proper deep wedge in here. Quite often she'll be in the actual um, usable kind of cave section down here too, the nest box. You can't really see it, but there's an access to it there. So yeah, what I found is she pretty much doesn't use the floor at all. Occasionally she's up in the branch underneath the UVB and stuff, but yeah, not on the floor. So what I decided to do is essentially give her some more rocks that she can use, therefore making that more usable space for this particular lizard. Now, I was pretty lucky that when I actually put together my Williams Eye Tank, this one here, there was a whole bunch of rocks in there from a previous build, which was my Felicipoda tank, which had a whole bunch of Kimberly style rocks in it, essentially, or what I'd call Kimberly style rocks. And with that build, I did end up actually pulling out all those fake rocks that I'd already made, already carved, already coated, and all the rest of it. And I ended up saving them. I didn't know what for at all. <laughs> and I'm so glad that I did, because lo and behold, I ended up using a whole stack of them for towards this build. So all of these rocks here, these kind of five here at the back, they were all originally in that Felicipoda build. And on top of that, I've added in another couple of rocks that I've kind of made up as well, which are gonna act as a bit of a vertical land, for vertical hide space rather, not vertical land space, vertical hide space for this lizard. So one of my good friends, Luke Youngins, he's seen these guys in the wild and he's kind of asked me, he's like, why don't you give them any vertical space? They seem to really like vertical space in the wild. And to be honest, I don't know why I didn't at all. It was just kind of like, a, this is what I think is going to work in this enclosure and I'll do that and I'll see how it goes. But as I just said to you, this particular crack, this one where it's kind of like just down the side of the enclosure there where that kind of rock meets up there, that's one of our favorite spots to hide. So that kind of got me thinking and I got the foam out and I basically carved up another couple of rocks and uh, that's what we're going to do here today. So before I keep yammering on, I'm going to let you have a look at how I put these rocks together and uh, we'll have a bit of a quick overbrief of that. And then from there what we'll do is we'll go and chuck them in the enclosure here and see how they actually look. And then hopefully towards the end of the video I'll score a whole bunch of B-roll over X amount of time or whatever like that of this Kimberly Rock Monitor using these extra rocks in the enclosure. So as I said, I was pretty lucky that I had some of the leftover rocks from the Felissa Poda build ready and essentially ready to go. All I had to do with those was coat them over a few extra times and fix up a few extra spots where you could see that I had them silicon to the walls of the glass. But the main thing that I wanted to do was create some sort of rock structure that allowed for vertical uh, hiding in between a crack. So that's what I was doing out of these other large chunks that I'd kind of, I'd already kind of started these up for um, the Kimberley build when I was deciding to do a different style of tank as such. Um, and I, yeah, I just had this foam kicking around, so I thought why not actually use these couple of pieces and see if I can turn them into something. They didn't require a little bit of extra carving, which the bulk of this I just ended up doing with a steak knife, so kind of shortening a few pieces here and there. So this whole build kind of follows a lot of the processes that I've used in plenty of other build videos that I've done. I'm using the uh, Bastion insulation foam. This stuff's really, really dense, so it makes for a really nice hard rocky surface. And all of this stuff was just glued together using 
uh, Gorilla Glue and used a few skewers and stuff to kind of wedge some of these bigger pieces together. I pretty much roughed in these kind of pieces here, these two big pieces, as to how I thought it might look kind of like having like one big rock that had kind of got split down the centre. All the other little pieces of rocks that I was making were essentially just going to be like little accent pieces that I could move around and kind of just position differently. I even used the back end of the steak knife just to kind of rough up some of these sharper edges on this build, just to allow for the, the pointing to kind of get into it and bite into it. This is an easy way to kind of put a little bit of roughness to it, rather than kind of getting out of the hot wire cutter. I thought I'd just be a little bit lazy on this build and actually just use the knife this time around. So I'm using tile pointing for this build as I do all of my builds. It's basically just a roofing compound that can kind of go onto a roof, so it's very durable, very flexible, and can put up with heat. And on these ones, I end up putting it on a little bit thicker than what I probably usually would for, you know, most of my builds, but it was still watered down to some extent. I did start off with a terracotta colour, but as you'll see here, I actually ended up using a little bit of sandstone oxide to kind of give it a bit more of a sandstone colour when I've done a couple more coats. But basically what you want to do is you want to essentially work up from a thin coat up to a thick coat and for these guys I gave them four coats of tile pointing. Even the rocks that I had previously made over the edges that already had tile pointing over them I had done another couple of coats just because I wanted to get that kind of colour and same sort of texture blended into them um, but I did kind of just start ease, easily with a uh, couple of coats on the sides that hadn't had it in the past. I didn't really want to hit all the other sides just first up, just because I didn't want to lose all that detail, so that's why I essentially did two thin coats over the actual sides that had already been carved and painted. For the main kind of coats that were actually going to be coloured, I ended up going with a sandstone tile pointing. Um, this doesn't really matter so much, just because I am actually using sandstone oxide with it, but it is something that I just decided I had it on hand, so I may as well use it. And it's also a bit of an easier colour to use the oxides in. You need a little bit less oxide just because it's actually closer to the mark. The difference between the sandstone tile pointing and the sandstone oxide is the kind of colour. You can see here that the oxide's a lot more yellow. And this was basically the look that I was going for, is something that was just a little bit brighter, a little bit more vibrant. I still watered it down a little bit just to kind of get it all started and it makes it easier for mixing the oxide through this stuff. It makes it a little bit more pliable but as you'll see it's still a reasonably thick coat when you compare it to a lot of the other coats that you might see when I initially start these builds. It honestly felt like Groundhog Day for me as I've painted so many rocks recently it's just unbelievable. But this is basically just the same old pattern of coat, repeat, coat, repeat letting a couple of days at minimum to dry in between coats. Ideally I'd be leaving at least five or six days just to make sure it's really well and truly done, especially if you're throwing on a bit of a thick coat. Um, but as you can see, these rocks are nice and yellow now. They've changed colour dramatically. And you know, they're not going to look like this permanently. We're going to change it all up anyway, but I like to use this colour as a bit of a base as when I'm doing kind of like different sandstone rocks. Depending on the style that I'm going for, a lot of the time I'll actually end up kind of dabbing a bit of a dry brush across this stuff while it is kind of semi-dry, just to try to rough it up and try to get a few of the paintbrush marks out of it. I'm not a perfectionist by any means. I'm sure down the line maybe I'll redo these again, but for the time being this is going to do me just fine. Um, but yeah, I do time, try to kind of either with sandstone, I try to create like really horizontal brush marks or I'll try to dab it so it's a little bit roughed up just so it doesn't look so uh, streaky with paintbrush marks which is quite common to get in the tile pointing so I'm trying to be a little bit conscious about it these days to make it look a little bit better. The final step is basically just dry brushing different colours over the top of these rocks. I'm using a mixture of greys, blacks, browns and whites to just kind of really blend these in and make them look a little bit more matched to what the rocks are originally inside of this enclosure. And this was very easily done. I kind of smashed this out in about, I'm going to say, an hour and I'd finished all these rocks. All right, let's get these rocks into this enclosure, I hope. I might actually take out the glass panels for this just to make it a little bit easier. I think she's pretty snug at the moment, so she's not going to jump out on me. And if, if she does, the door's closed, I'll end up finding her. <laughs> So 
So I'll probably start with these larger rocks that I plan to use as this kind of bit of a crack crevice type situation. And then from there I might stack these smaller rocks in front of it just to kind of bulk it out a little bit and give it a little bit of depth. I think that's going to do pretty good like that. It's a nice thin crack that she can get into. It kind of tapers in up the top too, so then she can actually get nice and wedged into there. So that might do for where that kind of position is. And um, yeah, as I said, might stack these other rocks in and around it a little bit and see if we can kind of bulk it out a bit. The one big major thing that I like about having these as like removable pieces is I'm not sure if I'm going to have these all in there or if I am, I can actually change up the position of most of it easily anyway. I think that position is always going to stay there just singly because of the heat, but all the extra pieces that I'm putting in now, I can chop and change them and move them around if need be. Okay, I got there eventually. It did take me a little while. I did actually end up putting all the rocks in there and I'm pretty happy with the formation of it so far. A couple of them are kind of wedged into place like this little boulder at the back here. These guys down here are kind of sitting somewhat loose including this little kind of footstool type one here. But that being said, there's way more surface area for this lizard to crawl around on now and majorly the biggest thing is that crack up there. I, I really wanted to give her that vertical space to see if she'd use it. I might play around with the kind of like depth of it over time, kind of pushing it, you know, closer together and whatnot to see where she kind of likes it, if she kind of likes it. But man, I'm stoked with that. Absolutely stoked with that. That's kind of given it another level as well, I reckon. And hopefully, hopefully, this is some of the last rock work that I'm going to have to do in a long while because it is so time consuming putting this stuff together. One of the things that I'm actually really enjoying about this enclosure now is that all the rocks are on different angles and such. They're not just all uniformly horizontal like what was here originally. We've got all sorts of different angles here where you've got some pieces up like this, like that big cracked rock there. This one's got a little bit of a slant here. There's a different angle from this one here, same as that little one that's down through there. And plus just having like little accent rocks right at the front there. It, it just looks different. It looks way different. And as I said before, having these rocks kind of removable, I'm going to be able to play around with this for a long time to come. What do you reckon though? It turned out half decent, hey? Alright guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bank up a whole bunch of B-roll now with this lizard hopefully cruising around in this enclosure. Um, yeah, who knows how long it's going to have to take me. It might take me a little while for her to kind of adjust back into this sort of setting. But once I get all that together, we'll uh, play that now. We'll wrap up the video and yeah, we'll see how we go.
Alrighty guys, please don't forget to share this video around if you want to, drop it a like, drop it a comment, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more reptile related content such as these kind of cool enclosures and such. And guys, don't forget to support the channel further if you wish to over on Patreon and Teespring as well and grab yourself some merch and some early access videos. Until next time guys, take it easy and I'll catch you then.